Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. Hope you joined the conference. Uh, my name is Lisa, and I'm an application developer at JP Morgan. In the next 20 minutes, I'm going to share with you our experience of using a Node.js application to introduce continuous deployment to the company. JP Morgan is not only a bank, it is also a technology company. There are 40,000 technologists working across 16 global hubs. JP Morgan is one of the largest tech employers in Scotland. Uh, the Glasgow hub, where I work, has almost 2,000 employees, all working in technology. The bank's investment in technology is massive compared to other banks. Over $9 billion has been spent on technology in 2016 alone. Before joining JP Morgan, I worked at relatively small companies and startups. I didn't really worry too much about security or access control. Downloading packages from the public NPM repository or using open source software, having access to production from my personal laptop was usually not a big deal. But working for one of the largest banks in the world really changed the way I treat my work, especially in terms of risks and responsibility associated with any change. Software failures happen, we all know that. And the financial industry is no exception here. So what is the cost here? In 2012, uh, a software compatibility problem in the Royal Bank of Scotland affected more than six million customers. The bank was fined 56 million pounds by UK regulators. Late last year, Tesco Bank closed its online operations after as many as 20,000 clients had money stolen from their accounts. Earlier this year, the financially sensitive data of Unicredit, Italy's largest bank, was leaked. About 400,000 clients were put at risk by the bank using a third-party supplier's API. To control the financial industry and to prevent such incidents from ha happening again, there is a number of global external regulations. These regulations shape and influence internal technology controls in the bank. Since every technology change in production is heavily audited, both internally and externally, there is company-wide change management process we have to follow. So how does it really affect us as developers? When development is complete and the change is ready to be released to production, we have to document the change we are about to release, produce test evidence and implementation plan, outline potential risks associated with the change, define the rollback strategy, and get a number of approvals from different peoples working at different parts of the organization. On average, it takes three to five days to complete these steps. After that, the change is ready to be released. But due to security and access control, the release itself has to be done by production management. This means that we cannot release whenever we are ready we will have to wait uh, for the release to be scheduled for a particular date. Moreover, there will be other teams releasing on the same day as we are, and we will have to wait for our release to be picked up by the production management team. Once the release has started, we will follow the process to make sure it goes according to the implementation plan, and when it completes, we will do some post-release checks and sign it off. Due to the manual nature of the process and dependency on another team as well, this process usually takes a few hours. And it doesn't really matter how big or small the change is. The whole process of documenting, getting approvals, and releasing takes the same time and effort. This effort usually resulted in accumulating changes and releasing them on demand, which in fact means larger, less frequent, and therefore a lot riskier releases. So instead, we wanted to automatically deploy every single change to production intraday, every time we merge code to master. For us, introducing continuous deployment was a shift that required both technical and cultural changes in the company. Our team works on a multi-purpose financial platform called JP Morgan Markets. The application we are working on is one of the core applications on the platform, the notifications distribution service. In simple terms, we distribute notifications to the clients based on the market events they are subscribed to. For example, we would send an SMS, uh, SMS, email, or mobile push notification to the client when euro dollar rate reaches a certain level. As with any application, you should not only be able to develop it, but you should also be able to support it. 
the most common question we were asked was, why is user X not receiving notification Y? The problem was that neither client services nor production management teams were really able to figure it out without engaging us, developers. To solve this problem, we built the admin console, a main application to provide visibility on end users, their existing setup, and some audit trail. At the time we built it, back in 2015, it was one of the first Node.js applications in the company. The application was relatively small and low risk, so we thought it was a perfect candidate for introducing continuous deployment. Since we were not yet able to automate the manual change management process, we have started by building two separate Jenkins pipelines. The first one from the development environment to system integration testing and from there to the pre-production environment. And the second one from pre-production to the production environment. The first one was triggered automatically every time we merge code to master. This pipeline builds a project, uh, deploys it to development and runs automated tests. Assuming all steps are successful, the pipeline then proceeds to the next environment. If automated uh, tests fail, the pipeline rolls back to the previous successful version. The production pipeline was triggered manually by the production management team on the release day. This pipeline includes security vulnerability checks, open source software scanning, deployment, and automated testing. As before, if automated tests fail, the pipeline rolls back. To create both pipelines, we have used Jenkins user interface. But the problem we faced with that was a lack of control over the pipeline changes. Both of our pipelines were evolving every day, but Jenkins UI didn't really provide us with a solid environment for developing and testing our pipeline code. The solution we found was to use the Jenkins pipeline plugin. It allowed us to migrate both pipelines into source control in the form of Groovy code. As a result, the pipeline code was tracked, audited, and treated the same way as application source code. At this stage, even though we were not yet continuously deployed to production, we have already achieved confidence in our deployment pipelines. We were iterating over the first one multiple times a day, each time we merge code to master. The second one has been successfully running at the end of every sprint for more than six months. We have also added the ability to turn features on and off and to run different automated tests on different environments. We were able to reach this stage when both pipelines are fully automated relatively quick. That's because we already went through the automation pain in our previous projects. For example, we have already built our internal shared Jenkins library to simplify and abstract some common pipeline code. What remained was getting the final approval from the senior change management owners and technical means to stay compliant with our internal change audit system. We spent months talking to different groups at various levels in the company, trying to sell the idea that automation reduces risk. To name a few major arguments we used. If a production incident happens, the automated pipeline allows you to recover as quick as possible. Production deployment will no longer be an independent job running every couple of weeks. Instead, it will be immediately preceded by three successful rounds of deployment and testing on low environments. The automated rollback strategy will never leave production in a broken state. Removing the need for manual input and the dependency on another team eliminates the risk of human errors. Finally, with these arguments and the success that our pipelines demonstrated, we managed to get the required approval. It allowed us to remove the manual step and merge both pipelines together. The first fully automated deployment to production happened in January 2017. So far this year, we've done more than 200 intraday releases to production. As a result, our time to market has reduced from three to five weeks to 20 minutes. Besides that, we are using feature flux to gradually roll out new functionality to production. We have noticed that the quality of our code and code review process have significantly improved due to the responsibility associated with every change. The bottom line is that we now have a lot more confidence in the changes we make, and we just have more time to develop rather than spending time releasing. In addition to all the benefits our team is getting from the continuous deployment, 
the big win for us is the shift in people's minds and companies' culture. In fact, the company is now rolling out a new change management process specifically designed to support continuous deployment. To share the knowledge, we are coaching other teams in the company to move towards a fully automated deployment model. There are a few important things we learned during our journey. First, you cannot rely on your pipeline if you don't have automated tests. But having too many of them can be equally bad. They will take long time to run, will be hard to develop and debug, and they will give you a false sense of confidence. It's a lot better to have limited number of end-to-end -to -end -to -end tests covering important user scenarios and giving you enough confidence to proceed through the deployment pipeline. You shouldn't automate all manual testing. Automation just helps to take the repeated work away, and then you can focus on manually testing more complex scenarios. The production environment is different. There is a good chance that you will hit a production problem which hasn't ever been seen on lower environments. And that's where the ability to continuously deploy to production on every single change is extremely useful. The next one is backwards compatibility. Always make sure that your change can be reverted by the deployment pipeline if necessary. And the last one is cultural. People are resistant to change. Anything new takes time to settle and be adopted by others. There were a lot of challenges on our continuous deployment experience. At the end of the day, not only were we able to achieve continuous deployment, but also to build one of the first Node.js applications in the company. The interesting thing is that big changes happen when there are big challenges. And you learn most when trying to overcome those limitations, both technical and cultural. This leads us to a better world for clients, for companies, and more importantly, for developers. Thank you.